Hello everyone, welcome to Chill Dill Trades where I analyze stocks so you know what's going on. Today we're going to be covering the stock market because crazy things have been happening lately. I made a video on Friday about the Chinese stock market as well as Alibaba, go check that out. And today I'm going to be covering the US markets because we have some interesting things happen. We've had a lot of great earnings over the last couple of days, but we have the stock market dropping. So what's going on? That's the question. If you haven't hit the sub yet, please go ahead and do that. Uh, and join the squad we're growing the goal is to get to 500 subs so please help us get there i upload daily videos on stocks and the stock market to help you understand what's going on so please do that but let's jump into things so the first thing i want to get into is the stock market's down but we just had amazing um earnings after the market closed so alphabet absolutely destroyed earnings i've been telling you about Al i've been telling you about alphabet for a while on in the discord join that um, links in the description on my Twitch stream where I, I stream every um, Saturday and Sunday. You can check that out as well. I've been telling you the best investment in this environment where we see high inflation, um, where we see supply chain issues, Alphabet, because they don't have risks in any of these environments. And this is going to be the winner. Facebook's going to be the winner. Um, and I've been telling you guys that. But we still see the markets dropping even though Alphabet's up. We saw Microsoft report pretty crazy numbers. They dropped after hours. Apple, amazing iPhone cell numbers. They dropped. Starbucks, a couple other ones, you know, didn't hit their targets. But going to um, AMD, they're up a little bit after hours. But the overall market's still down. And Visa beat their earnings, but the and, but they're down as well. So the question is, what is going on? And so I want to go to the charts to give you guys some some perspective on things. So I've been trading for a while, and the biggest thing you always see happen is buy the rumor sell the news and this is what we saw you know we had this drop down um a few weeks ago which i thought was going to be the dip in the market the beginning of the dip but it rallied back up i made a video back at the beginning of july telling you the market was going to peak out somewhere in the next couple weeks um towards the end of july you can watch that movie guys um i got i got the timing pretty well if we do see a reversal here um for a five to five to seven percent correction but what we're seeing in all these names is buy the rumor, sell the news. We had Snapchat report earnings around here and everything blew up to the upside when Snapchat beat their revenue targets on advertising. So you saw Google go up. Look where Google are, is in RSI. They've been hovering around like almost 80. And if you go on the weekly, it's even a more disgusting chart. They're at 80 on a weekly RSI. Facebook. They're up here towards overbought territory. If you go to the weekly, up overbought. I mean, we could do this with every single name. Microsoft, crazy overbought for the last couple weeks. All these things is telling us that a market pullback needs to happen. It's healthy for markets to pull back. I don't think that the bull runs over. I don't think we're there yet. Companies are still smashing earnings, so I don't think we're quite there. But I'll make more videos to tell you guys inside of when I do think the market's going to peak. But we see this thing with everything. Adobe, another big name that people don't really know about, but a big name in the um, QQQ, NASDAQ. It's been overbought for basically since the beginning of mid, around mid-June. It's been hovering in 70 and 80 range. People have been buying in before earnings because they knew companies were going to get beat. And that's the market's job. The market's job is to try to make you lose money. And what they often do is they'll buy the rumor, sell the news. And that's what we're seeing happen right now. So the question is, are we going to continue to see a downturn or not over the next couple weeks into maybe a 5 to 7% correction? My bias is yes, but we still need to see some things happen. So first thing I want to call out is what we often see the stock market do is diverge itself. So diverge is when the stock goes up, but you're seeing RSI decline. And so what we're seeing with this last pull up, in my personal opinion, I think this scare with the COVID scare kind of messed up the pattern that was supposed to happen in the stock market. I think we were here and we were going to move a little bit higher and then peak out and, and reverse. But the COVID rumor happened about things shutting down. People got scared and it pulled back and then we pushed back up. So we had almost two head fakes here. I believe that we were only supposed to have one, but the COVID scare created a second head fake. And on moving higher, we saw RSI head lower on both of those. That's a really big red warning sign that something could be imminent. When you see things RSI up at about 80 on the daily, and you see all these stocks peaking out that are the majority of the QQQ, 
that's telling us that something's coming. And so kind of looking forward, obviously we have this big candle day, which I think there's pros and cons of this. Some people say people bought the dip. Um, others will say, sorry, I'm getting my drawings all over the place and I hate keeping drawings on here for you. Some people say, you know, bulls bought up the dip. Some people say this is a reverse a hammer candle, um, which can be very bearish. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why it keeps doing that, but a reverse hammer that could be very bearish. So we'll have to see the confirmation tomorrow. When we go in the hourly, what we're going to want to see tomorrow is if this peaked out around here and it starts coming back down like this and make lower lows. So right now we have a high, we have a low, we have a higher, a lower high, and now we need a lower low. And that's what we're going to be looking for. If we do see that, there is a possibility that we are in the terms, the near term of a small pullback in the market. Like I said, five to seven percent. Nasdaq might be a little bit more than SPY, so maybe more to seven percent correction. But let's look at some potential price points. So the first thing I want to bring up is more on the short end of things. Let's go to the 50 day. If we go on the 50 day, we have that at around 346. So that's gonna be the first area that I'm gonna be looking for. If we can if we can hit this and bounce off, and then maybe that's that's the short end of the correction. I think that's about a 5% correction if we hit there. But if we don't, where are the potential next areas? So when we come in here, we see our past high before, you know, the stock market rallied into that post May correction is right here in this range, which is 440, 342, sorry, to 336. And when we go to the 100 day as well. We're also seeing the 100 day around that 336. So we have the 50 day up at the top at 346, and we have the 100 day at 336. So somewhere in that 10 point range is what I'm going to be personally looking at for a potential dip. And once it dips to that range, I believe that's all we're going to see, and then we're eventually going to see higher highs leading to the October range. So that's what I'm going to be looking at for the QQQs. We can go to the SPY. Uh, one more thing I forgot to call out is we are seeing MACD turn back negative again. So we saw the blue line go below, came back above, and now it's heading back below. And we also have divergence here. So just like we had on RSI divergence, we're also having divergence here as well. When we go to the QQQs, or SPY, sorry, I just did QQQs. Um, and I made this video back at the beginning. I told you 440-ish was going to be a potential top of the market for this short-term correction that we're going to see. But the same thing. If we go, we see divergence happen all the time. And the market likes to try to trick us. Here, we had they had, they made people sell out. It rallied back up. People bought into the rally. And then look what happened. Diverge, or sorry, I'm a little bit off here. Divergence. Look, RSI. Divergence. Here, same thing. People bought this dip, or they sold on the dip. And then they made them buy back up here. And look what happened. Quick drop. Divergence. RSI. Last thing right here, we see two divergence. So we see drop here, we go higher, we saw that COVID scare, and then we hit higher highs, we had two divergence, even more bearish. So we'll have to see what happens. We don't have MACD turning all the way negative yet, but we do see QQQ starting to head that way. So if that if Q continues to fall, we should see SPY also turn over more negative. Um, for SPY, the price targets we're gonna wanna look at is first for the 50 day, so I don't believe that the market's only going to come back to the 50 day. And the main reason is we did see it come back to that on the COVID scare, which I think was just part of the higher low scare, creating divergence in the market and then a bigger drop off in the coming weeks. Personal bias. I'm not your financial advisor, but that's my personal bias. I think the 100 day is more likely because I like I keep saying we, the market needs a five to seven percent correction. We haven't had a 5-7 per correction in months, and the market really needs that to stay healthy. The only way we're going to go to higher highs is if we get a healthy correction, because that resets, people sell out, new people buy in, more buying pressure to the upside. We need a bigger correction, and that's where I get to this range between, I would say, somewhere around 4. It might actually go a little bit higher than this, um, only because the 100-day the is moving up pretty drastically, but I would say somewhere between 4.18 and 410 is my price target for SPY. And on the high end, if we go to 410-ish range, I think it's more towards a 7% correction. If we come up to 418, it's more between the 4 and 5% correction.
but I do think we could potentially see a test around the 100 day, which is 415. When we compare that to the 50 day, what we saw happen on the 50 day is, and this is another thing that the tactic to scare people out of buying or, or make them sell is we saw a quick break under the 50 day and then we saw a rocket up. And so when we're looking at the 100 day, we're also going to want to look at something similar happen. We're going to want to look as if, if we see this continue to come down into the next couple weeks, we're going to want to see it break below the 100 day, fake out and move back to the upside that's going to most potentially call the bottom of this this small correction in the market. Um, so those are some of my price targets for both the SPY and the NASDAQ. These are things to look at over the coming weeks. Um, I still think you have an opportunity to buy here if you're more bearish. We are seeing the futures roll over right now. So we'll have to see if we make a lower high tomorrow or, or a lower low. And if we do, that could be causing some uh, more turmoil in the short term for the market. But that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for coming in again. I'm really curious what you think. Where do you think the market's headed? Uh, do you think we're in, in for a correction? Or do you think there's going to be more strength over the next few weeks or next couple months? And we're not going to have any correction at all. Uh, but guys, I really appreciate you stopping by. And I make a video every day. So I'll be back again tomorrow.